We did a broadcast last week about the MLS cyber attack on the Rapitoni. Uh, many, many MLS across the country are down. They're still not working. And all the challenges that that presents for working appraisers and real estate agents in general. And you've probably heard of some potential solutions out there. Uh, I did a, a broadcast on the Appraisal Update podcast, a, a kind of a breaking news Hal did one over on Buzzcast, and I think, think we were probably two of the very first announcing that in the appraisal space anyway. And uh, our prediction was that we would eventually hear from uh, Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae, and guess what? We, we, we did. <laughs> We've heard today from Freddie Mac. Uh, there was an email that went out. It says, what does the MLS cyber attack mean for appraisals? This is a single family update from Freddie Mac, our friends over there, and they're giving some guidance. They're talking about RPR. It talks about uh, what does uh, MLS availability affect appraisals? Why does it affect appraisal? What does it mean for you as a practitioner? What does it mean for the lender? It even talks about appraisal independence and unacceptable appraisal practice. And I could read all of that to you, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go right to the authoritative source. Uh, Mr. Scott Reuter has uh, agreed to join me today. So Scott, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Thank you, my friend, and I greatly appreciate that, Brian. Uh, yeah, and thanks to the broader team at Freddie Mac, like you and Hal. I, I think uh, you know we we jumped on this collectively pretty quick, and I think it's important. So the you were a recipient of uh, uh, an email communication that was sent to our subscriber list, addressing to your point the recent cyber attack on MLS systems nationwide, uh, how it impacts lenders and appraisers. Three main components: what does it mean for appraisers, as you said? What's it mean for lenders? And then sharing a bit of the news that we learned around a temporary solution that might be available in certain markets. So, to the to the first point, um, we addressed. Firstly, the appraiser obligations, and uh, you did a great uh, uh, webinar a couple of days ago, really reminding appraisers of the same two things we actually are touching on in this email, which was one, a reminder of, the, of our requirements for appraisal sold to Freddie Mac in particular, standards rule 1-4 of USPAP requiring appraisers to collect, verify, and analyze all information necessary for credible assignment results, number one. And number two, and I think you pulled this up in your uh, in, in your broadcast as well, a little clip of certification number 12, where the appraiser states they are aware of and have access to the necessary and appropriate public and private data sources, such as multiple listing service, tax records, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe you also mentioned, uh, Brian, you know, when you when you sign and certify, it's equivalent to swearing. You are swearing yeah. you you did that. And the bottom line for appraisers is that you really only complete assignments where you're confident uh, the results are credible. And if you don't have access to the data, the reality is you may have to wait. And, you know, adding language to the report uh, to, to, to try and cover yourself is, is, is not appropriate uh, uh, to state something like, you know, opinion of value may change when MLS systems are active. That's, that's, uh, that's not okay. Yeah, yeah, and and thanks, Scott. I mean, that's highlighted in your in your email pretty pretty clearly. And it it the section that says what does this mean for lenders? The very first sentence says appraisals could take longer. Well, that that's a great point, and I was going to get to that at the end of the appraiser section. In my view, it it ties right into the message to our lender friends. Right, appraisals could take longer. Period. Hard stop. Now, lenders are smart. And I think they understand this impacts their processes, so it doesn't hurt to be reminded, one. And two, we wanted to ensure that appraisers are not pressured in any way to complete an assignment. So we hold that very close as well. So in, in that letter you received, we also provided links as a reminder to air the appraisal independence requirements, as well as our clip from our guide on unacceptable appraisal practices. So. Right. And I just want to remind the appraiser community out there, look, I mean, we, we want to take care of our clients. I understand that, right? You want to be a good customer service provider. Uh, you've got, you've got uh, consumers that may be impacted by this. They're trying to close on a property. Yeah. They need the appraisal. They can't get it. So there's going to be probably a lot of pressure 
but there is a pressure independence requirement, as Scott mentioned, and and the key is, I've all I've always said, surely you're not trying to impact my independence as an appraiser, are you? And that normally works. They they that gets their attention. No, 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 no. We're not trying to do that. We're just trying. And sometimes there's things that we can do to help solve problems. And quite frankly, sometimes there isn't. And and as you said with RPR, maybe there are some viable solutions out there, but maybe right. there's not. Right. That that's a great point. So the third the third component was just what you touched on, Brian, was the RPR component. That's the Realtor Property Resource Database, and we were notified. And I and not to parenthetically say, I, NAR is being a great partner here. They reached out proactively. And I believe they reached out to the enterprises and 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 all the major stakeholders to share with them that this data set through RPR could be an alternative now that the MLS system is down until it's restored. And I saw, um, so appraisers are already kind of picking up on this in social media. They're discovering this is an option, which is great. And I think the, the neat aspect is it's temporary access to get at MLS data for members and non-members. And they made that very clear, non-members. So we wanted to be careful about you know, uh, getting too deep into the particulars of how to do this, other than we were made aware that this was an uh, an option. Uh, I think it's it's a it's a, a tremendously clever way to get to the entire suite of data, the photos, the sales, the listing information, and uh, and we just put a note in our outbound email that uh, our understanding is the appraisers need to work through their MLS boards for access. Uh, to get these uh, temporary credentials. And I think there's a caveat that each board may react a little bit differently, but I think the globally NAR and RPR as a, as a great industry partner is uh, working to make this available. Yeah. You know, I've, I've heard of um, instances where neighboring boards, you know, have, have let uh, real estate agents piggyback on their MLS. Okay. Uh, and, and maybe that's, maybe that's working in, in some, some particular markets, but I, I really like the, the sentence that you guys have in this email. Uh, the, the title is what does this mean for appraisers? And, and the sentence is this, guys. It says, appraisers should only complete assignments when they're confident that the results are credible. And I, I'm just going to put that up on the screen real quick uh, because I think that's a powerful statement, uh, Scott. Appraisers should only complete assignments when they're confident that the results are credible. And that credible means believable. It's defined in Black's Law Dictionary as worthy of belief. If the appraiser doesn't have sufficient data to develop a credible and adequately supported appraisal, or the appraiser believes that the opinion value may change when access to the MLS is available, then the loan is not eligible for sale to Freddie Mac. Freddie Mac's not going to buy those loans. Yeah, and it ties exactly, and it ties directly to, in, in my view, some of the wording in CERT 12 that that's all in the appraiser's hands, right? We trust the appraisers for a lot. And that's one in their particular market. They are the ones that need to make the determination that they have access to the necessary and appropriate data, to your point, such as not must use MLS, but such as MLS. I've had a couple of appraisers call me in rural markets. So there's even there's not even MLS out here. We <laughs> right. use another data. I said, then that's you're good to go. You know, uh, post something online, you know, show somebody that uh, show the appraisers out there. There's another way to, to do this. But in the reality in, is in most markets um, that MLS is relied on on very heavily. And if you're in one of those markets, you can't just rely on tax records. You can't rely on other sources. But again, if you're in one of those markets that you can, that's fine. But the credibility is the key. And you're a USPAP, an AQB USPAP yeah. instructor in the sakes. You, you know that. So, yeah, just a, a polite reminder to our appraiser friends. Uh, some direct reminding to our lenders of what our expectations are. And then again, just uh, pointing them in the direction of news as a conduit that we learned from NAR and RPR about, uh, you know, about a p potential option, hopefully in a lot of markets for appraisers. Yeah. Guys, you heard it directly from Scott Reuter with Freddie Mac. 
uh, I, I, I think he's, he just said it all. So, uh, again, uh, Scott, appreciate you taking the time. I mean, I, I know it's late where you're at. You were okay. willing to jump on and, yeah. and get the word out, and I certainly appreciate it, and thank you for all you do. You're welcome, and I will mention if uh, if folks out there are interested in uh, our collateral subscriber list, you're a member certainly. Uh, you can go to uh, singlefamily or sf dot forward slash appraisers. I can even send you a link, Brian, if you want to put it up. Um, Oh, and and they can get they can opt in to receive these emails and these notifications. But again, thank you and others who are who are really working hard to message to the industry early and often about the what the cyber attack means for appraisals. And uh, yeah, we're happy to continue to do our part. Thanks, Scott, so much for being here. I mean, the, the email went out today and he's on my program today to, to try and help get this message, yeah. important message out to the appraisal community. So again, Scott Reuter with Freddie Mac. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. It. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Appraisal Update Podcast, a special edition on the breaking news as it continues to unfold. Be safe, and until next time, I'm your host, Brian Reynolds. Happy appraising. The Appraisal Update Podcast is brought to you by Appraiser eLearning.